Hi, this is Jim Dolan with m m Heating and Cooling in Toledo, Ohio. And we're going to be going through a startup on a Amana air conditioner, three ton. And we're going to be going over this clean and tune on the checkout operation and charge. And a few things we're going to be talking about is the size of the air conditioning, how to determine the size of the air conditioner, how to determine the charge of the air conditioner, the voltage of the air conditioner, where to find that on the air conditioner. We'll go over the motor amps and compressor full load amps max working pressure in the factory charge, the type of refrigerant it has in it. And we're going to be talking about how to clean a condenser coil, how to check the charge, make sure the air conditioner is working properly, check an airflow, temperature rise, and thermostat operation. I'm going to talk a little bit about superheat. Superheat is the amount of heat that the evaporator picks up after the last of the liquid refrigerant is evaporated. And subcooling is simply the amount of heat removed below the refrigerant condensing temperature at a particular pressure measured in a degree of Fahrenheit. Why is superheat and subcooling necessary? The more subcool the liquid from the condenser, the more efficient and stable the liquid will be and run from the condenser to the metering device to the indoor coil and will make the evaporator more efficient in collecting heat. Okay. Today we're going to be going through a 14 point cleaning check on an air conditioner. We're going to clean the condenser with either high pressure CO2 or water with, if the garden hose, if it's available. Check the refrigerant charge with the gauges. Check the superheat of the system. Check the indoor filter system and airflow. Check an evaporator assembly. Check indoor electrical connections. Check indoor blower motor assembly. Check indoor blower assembly. Oil indoor blower motor assembly. Oil outdoor blower assembly. Check outdoor electrical connections. Inspect outdoor condenser, inspect suction line for proper insulation, inspect the airflow from the indoor registers, and inspect the thermostat for proper leveling and operation. First thing I'm going to be doing here is hooking up my gauges. I'm going to be hooking up my uh, low side to my suction line at the service port here. And I'm going to be looking up my high side to my liquid line. Got the gauges hooked up. I'm getting ready to start it. I already got the thermostat turned on, calling for cooling. It's going to plug in the disconnect here. Probably on a time delay. What is the average time delay? Uh, the thermostats, a lot of digital thermostats have an automatic built in five minute time delay for short cycling if you cycle it on and off. A lot of communicating control boards will have their own time delay anywhere from three to eight minutes. And getting ready to check the charge. First thing you gotta make sure you got a clean filter. All the registers are open, the blower's going. I'll make sure you got a clean condenser coil. You gotta let the air conditioner run for eight, five to ten minutes, let it stabilize before you can determine check the charge or adjust the charge. And what are the operating pressures currently? The current operating pressures are about 110 on the suction side, and it is about 195 on the high. 195 on, 195 the, high on side. the high side. What's the current temperature out right now, Jim, around now? Current temperature is 58.5 degrees. Okay. Right here at the condenser. First, determine how to check the charge to refrigerant for proper operation. A few things we need to determine. We need to determine if they're what type of metering device is on the indoor evaporator. Whether it's got TXV, cap tubes, or a fixed orifice. I've already determined this one has a fixed orifice on it, so that's gonna tell me I'm gonna check my refrigerant charge by superheat. If the system had a TXV on it, we'd be checking it by subcooling. To check the refrigerant charge on the system, we have gotta determine what type of metering device. This system already has, I determined is a fixed orifice. So we're gonna check this refrigerant charge by superheat. So to determine the superheat, we're gonna to have to get a wet bulb reading in the house, and then you take the wet bulb reading, you record that, and then you take an outdoor temperature reading by a chart on the manufacturer installation instructions. So to determine what the superheat should be on the unit running, what I do is I use a slide chart. It's for non-TXBs for 410A. I set the wet bulb, entering wet bulb, at the pointer. I take an outdoor temperature reading at the condenser. I find the closest temperature. The chart only goes down to 55 degrees on this one. So it's at 58.5 degrees. Round that up. So we're looking at 60 degrees. My superheat for this unit should be about 12 degrees running. So to determine the superheat of the unit, 
of what it's actually running at. We're gonna take the temperature of the suction line using the clamp-on digital thermometer. And that's giving us the temperature of the suction line of the air conditioner running, 34.8 degrees. We're gonna look at the gauges after it's ran for five to 10 minutes to stabilize. And we're gonna take a look at the suction gauge to the pressure, which correlates to temperature, which is the evaporator temperature. To determine the, the evaporator temperature for superheat, we're gonna take the low side gauge, the pressure, which correlated to temperature, and on this gauge, it's got the temperature, which is in the pink, on the inner scale for 410A. So that's at about 32 degrees, 31, 32 degrees on the inner scale, and that determines my evaporator temperature. So to determine superheat, we're gonna take this temperature and add to that temperature, and that's the difference between the two, which is which will be your superheat. The suction line should be always warmer than your evaporator temperature, which is on the gauge. Here I'm determining the superheat of the refrigerant charge of the system. Currently we've already known that we're supposed to have roughly 12 degrees of superheat. Right now we're running at about four degrees of superheat. That would let me know we're probably a little bit overcharged. Another thing you definitely want to look at is make sure you got good airflow, because that will affect this. Clean filter, all the registers are open. So in an overcharge situation, you would just reclaim a small amount yes. of refrigerant. Yes, recover a little, small amount of refrigerant to get that back maybe down. Maybe a few ounces of refrigerant? Yeah, just a few yeah. ounces to get it probably back down. Pretty close to an exact charge, correct? Uh, I'd rather see it around eight. That'd be close. Okay, okay. So the variance on the superheat can be, say you say it's just a couple of degrees. Uh, within, yeah. within, within, within a couple degrees. I'd say the, the superheat range I'm looking for it would be plus or minus three degrees of the chart. 15 to uh, 9. Okay, 15 to 9. 15 to 9. 15 to 9. 9 degrees. Yeah. But before I remove the refrigerant charge or adjust the refrigerant charge, I would definitely make sure you got good airflow, all the registers are open, clean filter, okay. and I'd always want to check the subcooling just to make sure there's not a restriction in the system that someone's all grossly overcharged it. But you check the charge and adjust the charge by superheat on a system that has a cap tube or a fixed orifice. If the system had a TXV, then we'd want to check the charge and adjust the charge by subcooling. And TXV is a thermostatic expansion Thermost valve. Yeah. TXV is a thermostatic expansion valve that automatically controls the flow of refrigerant to the indoor evaporator. And that's determined by the condensing temperature, which is on the high side, which correlated to high side pressure. And then you take the temperature of the liquid line clamp on digital meter, and the liquid line should be at a cooler temperature than the temperature on the condensing temperature, correlated to pressure on the gauge. Or a PT chart, if you're using a PT chart, pressure temperature chart. If it was a TXV, it's on average a 10 degree subcooling. Some manufacturers specify on the nameplate 8, 10, 12, and that would let you know on a TXV situation if you've got enough refrigerant in the system.